You guys ever seen one of these? These are freaking dope. 3D maps. We have these on our website, by the way. Check them out if you're looking for one. Anyways, let's go check out what's been going on. <laughs> By the way, the subfloor kit is updated per popular demand to have more angle and no tubing and more rivets, I think. That's what people really wanted after we got feedback. So we do listen to feedback. We appreciate the feedback. So this kit that we're going to install the subfloor is slight is you're going to get an updated kit if you get the subfloor kit. get too far into this thing a budget way to do this see how it's skinny and then tapers all the way down to a pretty deep area you just get a piece of wood or something to kind of measure where, where it is you would actually want your subfloor to go bracket it across or just temporarily fasten it across with i don't know clamps something to the gussets and then one to the lowest part which obviously we probably would just be laying on that back gusset because it's completely flat you would just measure get like a piece of wood draw it get the measurements kind of template and what a lot of people do is they get a two by eight or two by ten and then they just cut the taper so it starts out like six or eight inches here and ends up being like an inch and a half back here and they use that as a spine for the subfloor for a wooden subfloor they'll maybe run two of those i've seen one and then a, a lesser tapered uh piece of like a like a two by six or something and then or two by four down here and splintered so you got like one one major subfloor kill or support and then like an, a few additional ones or just one major kill and then a, a thicker piece of plywood like half inch five eighths and they do it that way so we're talking about ways to budgetly frame out a subfloor that'll probably last i mean i know wood rots and everything the subfloor is going to get beat up the most which is why we're adding an aluminum kit into this boat you know if you're painting if you resin coated the wood with polyester resin or some sort of cheap bondo resin it would last quite maybe quite a bit longer and FYI, I've also seen people get um, like brackets of angle or channel from aluminum and just join them in the back and then taper them up here. Taper them up here um, with just a piece of tubing or a piece of angle. So it's pretty much like a big gigantic long triangle that tapers. They make the big light, long triangle out of channel and they taper it back and that becomes their spine too. So we're going to have two independent spines. We're going to be doing something very similar to that. But uh, right now we're, we need to do the cross beams. We're running one cross beam in the back, very, very short. And then one right here. This needs to be the, the one. This is where it starts to get a little bonkers and starts to get a little crazy and starts tapering too much. Like to run it any, any further up would be stupid. It's also a big giant waste of space to run yourself for all the way across. Cause you have that big pit right there that is phenomenal space inside a B-hole. And, and if you convert a B-hole versus a flat bottom, you'll run out of space real quick. You'll be like, man, the taper really does do you in so you you were going to get less usable like like compartment storage space in a b-hole like this so if you cut off the pit by adding the subfloor all the way up you're just doing yourself i think a huge disservice personally <laughs> that longer and then cut the one part of the angle left left this part of the top and then flange it up and rivet it right here that would have been pretty good so we'll still be able to do this right through into that gusset right there but and i would use a drill with a super low chuck setting if you drill through this you drill through your floor that's it for you To level out, we're gonna take this two by four. It's like a 10 footer. Subfloor is about gonna supposed to be about 75% of your boat. Roughly. Put this here. Laying out here. Now you can really see how the boat's saber. So fun fact, this line, that's how the boat's gonna sit in the water. 
So now we would want to lift that. You can kind of envision where you want it. And I kind of want it not too terribly far off from like this. Like this is pretty good. If your frame and everything tapers down a little bit, it is not a big deal. You will barely, obviously if it's a huge de decline or incline, you'll fill it. But if it's not completely level with the boat, it's not the biggest deal. Sometimes you can sacrifice the incline um, with the decline so you can get more spacing in the hatches. Right on the verge, I think another inch up and it would be perfect. Put the trigger right there. low so my height of just under three inches about 2.75 inches at the very back beam all the way to 5.75 inches so we had a three inch incline really you could have put it at six inches guess it's right at one and a quarter um one and a quarter that's hilarious Beams have been made. The most important ones have been made. The ones that determine the entire height and transition of the subfloor have been made. And then spacing. Do you want every other rib or do you want every rib? One. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We have eleven ribs and some change. We have eleven. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're gonna do one every rib because that's just a smart thing to do. I put a level at the flattest part of the boat. The boat is level on the flattest level part of the boat. And then any adjacent angle you're gonna do. And then we can actually even test this one. Is this one off too? That's pretty good. But it is only a rivet. just now came to me in my common sense dreams that there's a much better way to do all that because that's too risky they're running the lines and plus it's not quite measuring up so what i plan to do is get this. this piece from the line all right that's a good measuring stick that's pretty level right there and we just mark it with the next okay, one okay that's level like precision right now That's good. That's where it's supposed to be. So what we're going to do now is actually frame this in. So here we are, we've got the back beam, the forward beam, and we have a middle beam that ends at six feet because the sticks come in the package at six feet because anything over that is obscene for shipping. And we have the lineups. This one can slightly go over there. 
I'm just gonna rivet that one down and then we're able to run the cross beam. Uh, so it's a very efficient way to use the aluminum where we'll have a lot of sticks left over to do a lot more with, which is good because we need more for the framing anyways. Keep all spare brackets, throw nothing away, and you'll know what you'll see why in a second. I like working on a smaller boat, I can actually stand on the outside of it and reach in and be okay. It's, you can imagine how much time you save by not having to go in and out of the boat. I am using straight pan head rivets on the end, they are stronger. And you really, the boat doing this deal, bent, you know, you don't want countersink where the boat is visibly flexing all the time. It's a bad idea. Now, before you put too many rivets in this, it'll get real tight to kind of put this in. So we want to use these pieces of angle. They're extremely useful. These little cutoffs, you can essentially frame your entire boat just using them. Pretty good. This one I'm gonna redo like that one. I'm gonna flip, I'm gonna drill that one out and flip it to where the rib's closer this way. Make it that way. That's a pretty strong joint right there by itself. We're gonna go ahead and attach the countersink to the top and then that's a really actually very strong joint. And then if you wanted to run more, you could. Because like if you wanted to run one more here because you were not quite happy with the joint, you could do that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. That actually will stiffen this whole track out because remember after a foot it starts to flex. You can actually feel it flex. But right at a foot, if it didn't have this gap here, it would it would stay pretty stiff. About 10 inches to a foot. So we could just trace one here, trace it right there, push it, and then um cut it, rivet it, and we could just do that for like a lot. Place, place, place brackets. The number of brackets you have for the subfloor crossing for the actual beams, the better off you are. Substantially better off you are. This is not the most stable footage, but we finally got it done and the light's almost out. Probably gonna get my pro camera because it will take uh, super high light and almost like no light at all. Like it pretty much can be dark and it'll still have a pretty good flow. But this is it. And it did not take me all day. It did not take me from sunup to sundown. I started sometime close to noon. Then I had to break off really a few hours. I mean, the bigger thing was just making sure it was all gonna line up straight like it did. And so you see it, that's about as straight as it gets. Truly looks pretty friggin' dope. Only one joint in the middle, that's because there were six foot sheets, but that's right where the back deck's gonna be, so really that's probably a good spot for a joiner to be. And we'll just make sure to extra reinforce those. Now I have to have the put the time in to put the brackets. You only have brackets like there and there. But every, and you know, we have one somewhere else here, but every so often, actually every, every spec we need to have a bracket. And you can even double bracket it here. On longer spikes that are over a foot, you can put one here. I'm not quite sure if we're gonna pour foam. I gotta really seriously think hard on it. Or whether or not it's even worth it to pour them from this. Or just really strengthen the subfloor out because this is such a crappy design. I mean, really, it's old. Let's give it to it, it's old. But it is so bad that I'm not quite sure pour foaming it is the best thing. It was definitely not made for pour foam. It doesn't have a great cha channel. Water's just gonna sit on the foam. 
no matter what we do, I mean, we can maybe drill slight holes through the gussets right in the middle and that would help with, with water flood out, but ultimately the, the foam is just going to sit in water. And so unless whoever takes this, takes extremely good care of it, it's going to just uh, collect water and get heavier and float. Or we could just not do that, bulletproof the subfloor as best we can, and then move on. But I think we might actually add foam because this boat is so thin and the wave shutter and all the things that will go happen to it. I mean, the foam will substantially, um, you know, uh, smooth that all out and give the, give the boat itself some structure. So it, it really is worth it to put the foam in. So it probably will just do it anyways. It's just what we do. But, you know, whoever gets this boat is gonna have pretty clear instruction to not screw it up. Three parts of the subfloor. There is the preliminary framing, which you just saw now. Then there is the actual foam itself, and then the top deck. We'll be doing all three over a series of three videos. So this is very detailed, because this is what everybody wanted. A more instructional, not so slimmed down version of the subfloor. One of the most asked questions probably ever. So here it is. If you like this content, please help it trend. Subscribe, leave a like, a comment. Check me out on all my other social media platforms. It helps me trend more than you'll ever know. Whether you need information, tutorials, products, or simply connections to other tiny boaters around you, we have it all right here.